Hello world. In this video, we're going to talk about how to use effect and effect callbacks inside Angular 17 in conjunction with signals. Welcome to WebDev Frontiers. My name is Tamash, and I'm here to share my experience with you in web technologies. As I said in the introduction, we're going to take a look at how effect callbacks work in conjunction with signals. And in light of that, I put together a very simple example on how to use signals. Now, this is just a refresher because I've already recorded a more in-depth guide on this, and there's going to be a link in the description as well as a card appearing on the screen. So if you want to learn more about just signals, then please have a look at that video. But for now, let's just make sure that this works as we expect this to. So let's go to the browser. We get number of apples, and if I click this button, the number increments as expected. So what does effect do? Now, if you come from a React background, it's going to be very similar to how the use effect React hook works. Essentially, we can instruct Angular to run a callback function every time when the value of a particular signal changes. The one caveat that you need to remember is that we can only add that inside the constructor. So we need to create a constructor, and inside the constructor, we can now call this effect, which will also import from an angular slash core. And then we can specify a callback function here. And we're just going to say console.log and say that the Apple signal value changed. And so every time when the signal value changes, this message will be logged to the console. Plus, because it's inside the constructor, the very first time when this particular component gets mounted, it will also run this particular statement or this effect callback function. So if I go back to the browser, notice inside my DevTools, I already see the message Apple signal value changed. And with the effect, we can basically keep track of every single signal that got changed. So if you have multiple signals, it doesn't matter which one changes, you will get the effect to execute. Now, probably you're thinking, well, what if I only want to run an effect if a certain signal value changes, but not run the effect if some other signal value changes? The solution to that is to specify the untracked function. So we just need to call untracked and we need to specify the signal that we do not wish to track. So for example, we could say untracked this dot count apples. And in this case, we get apple signal value changed. But then as it keeps on changing, we no longer get that particular message in our console. Okay, so you can use untracked to specify which signal values you don't want to track, i.e. you don't want the effect to run for them. Now in this video, we're going to put together an example which will allow us to change between a light and a dark theme. Because one of the very specific use cases that is also specified inside the Angular Docs for using the effect callback is to sync up data with local storage. And of course, if you have a dark theme and a light theme selector, it's very likely that once a user picks either the light or the dark theme, you save that into local storage. And so we're going to be using signals in conjunction with local storage to make sure that if someone selects the dark theme, it's going to be stored inside local storage, plus it's going to also update the signal so that the theme will automatically change to the dark theme. And that's why you can see that I already created a component called theme. So we're going to come here, just enable the template, and we will need to write the code for this template. Now you can see I have an if control flow here, which says if the theme signal is equal to light, then show a button where the text is dark theme. If, of course, we have the dark theme, then show a button that has the text light theme, and they both call the change theme method from this class when someone clicks the button itself. But of course, that's not written because that is what we're going to be putting together right now. So let's start off by putting together the change theme class method. So change theme. This is going to be a relatively simple one first, but then it's going to get a little bit more complicated because we're going to add some more logic to it. But essentially what we want to do here is use a signal where we store the value of the theme 
and then if it's light set it to dark if it's dark set it to light so we also need to set up a signal let's call the theme and this signal is going to start with a value of light now this is not going to be the final solution i can already tell you that that this will not work but i want you to understand why it doesn't work let's just initialize the theme signal with the value light and inside change theme we're going to now be able to say this dot theme dot set and then just make sure that if it's light we set it to dark if it's dark we set it to light okay and this is it and now if we go to the browser notice we have the dark theme button here if we click it it becomes light theme if we click it again it becomes dark theme of course the overall theme of the page doesn't change because we haven't added that functionality yet nor does it do anything with local storage yet so let's take a look at how to do that Inside a constructor in the theme component, we're going to be using the renderer and we're also going to be accessing the DOM using the document here. And what we want to do is effectively make sure that we store the theme in local storage. And we're going to use the value for of the signal for that. And the reason why I have the renderer and the document is because I want to make sure that I apply the appropriate dark or light themes to the documents that we can see the UI to change as well. So we need to add that functionality right here. And we're going to be doing that by calling if this dot theme is equal to light. So we're going to check if the signal has the value of light, then we're going to call this dot renderer dot add class. And we're going to be adding a class to the body. And of course, in the else statement, we're going to be removing the very same class. OK, so let's see how the browser would change. So if we click dark theme, then we have the dark theme. If we click light theme, then we have the light theme. So this seems to work. But now comes the interesting problem. How do we write this information to local storage? And let's open DevTools and go to the application tab. And inside the application tab, you can actually check the values that you have inside local storage. So we have the key theme here with the value of light. And notice that regardless of what theme I'm using, I always get the light theme. And the reason for this is because remember, when the application starts, we just set the value of the key inside local storage to be light. And that's not good because remember what I said every time when the component gets added and loaded in Angular, the signal value will be taken into consideration. And so we need to change our logic slightly. We can't just have signal light here because we need to do something else. We need to either read the value that already exists inside local storage and make sure that we update local storage if the value of signal changes. Now, how do we update something if the signal changes? Well that's right we need to call effect okay so this is going to be a lot better however i'm still not happy with this because we can't just set the signal to have the value of light we should first try to see if a value already exists in local storage and if it does then use that otherwise default to light okay so this looks a lot better but we also need to go back to our app components and make some changes in here since app component is our root component, we also need to make sure that we try to get the value that we store inside local storage. And if we store something inside local storage, then we basically add that class to the body. So if we stored the dark value, we're going to set the theme to be dark and we're going to apply the appropriate classes. And the reason why we do this is because I want to make sure that if someone selects the dark mode, they leave the website and they come back, I still show them the website using the dark mode. Now, of course, if they clear their local storage or if they clear their cache and cookies and everything else inside the browser, I will lose access to this. So you're probably better off storing this in a database of some sort. But for a sample demo, we're just going to store this in local storage. And I want to make sure if I select the dark theme and if I refresh the page, I'm still presenting the dark theme back to the user. And now putting all of this together, let's see what happens. So let's just refresh the page. We get theme light and we get the option to switch to dark theme. So if I hit this button now, notice that the theme now changes to dark. And if I refresh the page, I still get the dark theme. Now, if I press light theme, 
then the theme would be defaulting to light and if i refresh the screen i would always get the light theme so using signals and using the effect callback and using local storage i am now able to make sure that the ui is in sync with local storage and that if the user comes back to the site i can still present them the same theme that they have selected and there you have it this is how you use the effect callback inside angular 17 in conjunction with signals the one thing that i would like to add at the very end of this video is the fact that effects is still in developer preview as of the recording of this particular video. So maybe by the time you watch it, it's already out from a developer preview and you can use it in production. But for now, just make sure that you understand that this is still something that should not be used in production. If you're already using effect in your applications, please let me know how you do that inside the comments. Also, if you're going to be trying them or you have some good ideas on what to do with it, please let me know. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, do subscribe because more such content will be coming up. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.